Good day, everyone. Um, I'm a Christian, and uh, I feel like, uh, well, God has revealed things to me, and um, he has things that he wants people to know. And uh, so I just ask at this moment that God be with me, guide me, direct me, and for your will to be done, and for you to... Um, speak what you want people to know and uh, at this point I feel like God wants to um, use me to speak about COVID and the church and uh, shed some light on uh, what's been going on with this uh, so-called pandemic um, it is a deception it's a lie it's completely over exaggerated um, virus um, I wouldn't say that the virus doesn't exist but the severity of its effects are greatly exaggerated and that it's uh, from the devil um, being used as a scare tactic and uh, to cause people to try to force people into submission to the devil and his evil plans and unfortunately there are many people who call themselves Christians and many maybe are Christians Many are not, and there are some that can be Christians, and they are maybe asleep, or they're just deceived into believing that COVID-19 is a some kind of a threat, and that we should mask ourselves and walk around like we are in fear of death, and people take Bible verses such as obey authority, which I know it says that we are supposed to obey authority, uh, the rules of the land and such as that. But there comes a point when though lawmakers and those in authority can become evil and doing things that are unlawful and unjust and in this case, they have become very unlawful, unjust. And if people go along with these evil, unjust dictates, then they are joining in with lawlessness. So even though they think that by wearing a mask is the right thing to do and that they are... Um, being righteous and doing so, um, in actual fact, they are co-laboring with lawlessness and helping to spread the message of fear and to uphold the lie and deception of COVID-19 and the severity of it. So it's been over two years now and it's been all over the world, I would say, this, this virus. And just take a look around you, wherever you are. Is there people dropping dead everywhere? No, there isn't. There are some people that have died, yes. But there hasn't been uh, a massive amount of deaths, comparatively speaking to the population that we have and compared to other viruses and other causes of death that can be just as severe and even more so um, in the case of abortion which is legalized murder um, the number one cause of death so I hear uh, maybe last year was abortion at 50 million deaths worldwide so that compared to two and a half million deaths of COVID-19 is, uh, what is that, like 
20 times greater, more deaths from uh, legalized murder, aka abortion. Um, that's kind of another topic, but I might as well touch on that as well. The big uh, deception in that and the lingo they use is my body, my choice, um, is a twisted up thing because the body that is most going to be affected is that child, the baby, that infant that has been growing and developing, that is alive in the womb. So when they say, my body, my choice, and they take the life of another, that is not their body. In fact, it is a combination of the father and the mother. So they are taking the life of another, um, conceived most likely in a sinful relationship, adultery, fornication, some sort of a sin. And so it's an unwanted child because they were doing something they shouldn't be doing in the first place. And instead of living with the consequences and dealing with them appropriately, they take the easy route out and just kill the child to deal with their problem. Um, so, that being said, I'll go back to the COVID-19 deception and the lingo being used in that is wear a mask to save lives and to save your life and to lives the lives of others. Basically saying that you can be the savior by wearing a mask. You can be Jesus because really the only savior is Jesus. The only one that can truly save a life is Jesus. Not a mask can't save you. Not a vaccine can't save you. No one and nothing can save you except for Jesus. But the message that's been pumping out is wear a mask to save a life, save a life, save your life. You know, all, it's, a, it's a deception, a subtle deception. And people wear it because they want to try to appear righteous, even though inside they're evil. And, uh, you know, outside appearances, people are so obsessed with outside appearances. They want to, because they don't want people to really see them and know them as they truly are. So they're always put, trying to put on an act a show how we dress, big focus, how we dress, how our hair is, how our nails are, how our, how our clothes are, how, what's our car, what's our house. All these outside appearances when the inside of people is corrupt and evil and sick and it's hidden. People are hiding and they're not only hiding from each other, but they're hiding from God. Unfortunately, but I just want anyone to know that's watching this that isn't a Christian that... Uh, God already knows all the things that you've done. So why not come clean and be honest with God? And when you do that, God uh, will, he will see that and he will have some respect for you at that point and see, wow, this person uh, loves the truth. He uh, is not afraid to uh, expose himself and to reveal the truth instead of trying to lie and hide and cover up. And if you believe in faith in Jesus that died for your sins, that you can be forgiven. And uh, because your penalty of sin has been paid by God himself, Jesus in the flesh. So, unfortunately, um, because of COVID-19, there's been a great division amongst us. And the reason for that being is that because of the government trying to dictate to people what to do and not allow people to have the freedom of choice to decide for themselves, they try to decide for everybody, um, then people stop respecting the choices of others and their what choice they make if they choose to wear a mask or if they choose not to. People need to respect other people's choices and the government needs to uh, realize that we are all individuals and we are allowed by God to make our own decisions and our own choices. And no matter what the government does, we do. 
we make our choices. And even in doing so, if the government makes laws that are unjust and says that if we make our free choice to do something and they decide, well, those choices are going to be met with punishment, even, even if they're right, then we still have the free freedom to choose and to face those punishments that the government unjustly hands out and tries to come at people with threats and fear to try to force them into submission to obey. And instead of the church, um, not all, some of the members of the body of Christ, instead of us standing up and being light and salt and speaking the truth, um, a lot of what is happening is they go along with an evil government and they don't, and they obey man over and above God because God has said not to forsake gathering together, especially when you see the end is near. And a lot of people have been saying for a long time that the end is near. And I agree, the end is near. And so since the end is near and God states in his word that we are not to forsake gathering together, especially when the end is near, then just because an evil government has said, hey, no, we don't want, you can't gather together. There's some virus that you should be scared of. And so that you should stop gathering, even though God has said, don't forsake gathering people out of fear, even though they try to use the Bible to say they're doing it because they're going to obey the authority. They don't realize that this authority has become unlawful and wicked. And they are going against the word of God and telling people not to gather, which they had done. And people forced and people stop gathering just because of what the government says. They took the government's word over God's word. And God has a purpose behind all of this. So even though all this is happening and I'm talking about this and, and stuff, I, I'm not afraid and, and I understand that God has a purpose and there's a reason behind it. And, and yeah, it can be difficult, but still, um, it's all good. It's all good. God's got it all under control. And it's all going to work out just fine. And uh, I think it's part of God's plan to separate the, the, um, the weeds from the wheat, you know, like uh, to show, to, to break down this false prostate uh, so-called church that idolizes man and is following after the teaching of men and the, and the teaching of demons, false teaching. And people... Um, sit under these false teachers because they think that these teachers are from God because they went and paid money to go get a some schooling and some uh, educate some worldly institute um, to earn their so-called knowledge of God. God doesn't work that way. He he's a uh, spiritual, and he can teach anyone and everyone who's open. And uh, you don't need to pay money to learn about the things of God. And um, so people sit under these false teachers, not all. And there is, there can be good things that come about through um, people going off to school. But I'd say it's highly unnecessary. And that we are not working together as a team. We are, we are doing very poorly as a team. We're not working together. We're acting like one man, man is in charge instead of Jesus is the head of the church. We should all be listening to Jesus and obeying Jesus and listening to one another and allowing each and every one of us to uh, contribute their gifts. They're, they are given through the Holy Spirit, whether it's word of knowledge or word of wisdom or encouragement or whatever it is. We have been we have been doing very poorly and we have not been uh, united together and uh, having proper fellowship and um, 
as we should be and sharing with each other. It's like we gather together in what people think is the church, what they call these buildings, they call the church, which isn't even the church. The church is the body of Christ, the members of the body of Christ, those that have been born into Christ. We are the church. A uh, building not built with human hands, but we're spiritual stones in God's holy temple. That's what the church is. If you are born into Christ, you're a member of the church. You don't, you don't join a church through signing up for some membership or having some person approve and say, oh yeah, you can be part of the church. No, that's not how you become part of the body of Christ. It's through Christ. And God decides who's in the church. If you're born again, you're in the church. There's no man can say, no, you're not, or yes, you are. So, unfortunately, we got a lot of troubles down here, but God's going to work them all out. And uh, it, I hope that uh, people um, shed off sin, fear, everything of this world and live for God and speak up and do what's right and seek God's will and allow God to work through you. Everything that God requires of us, he gives us the power to um, have it be done. So whatever God is saying that we should do, all we have to do is look to God and it will be done by his power, his strength, his wisdom, his knowledge. He upholds us. He's our life. He makes us to rise up in the morning and to lay down at night. He gives us strength. He makes our feet move. He makes our lungs breathe. He feeds us. He helps us see. He helps us hear. Everything we do is because of him. Without him, we are nothing. We have no life. We are not alive. We are dead without God. We don't even exist without God. God is our life. He's our breath. He's our everything. And everything we own belongs to God. We, nothing is of our own, but it's all his. So if God says that he wants you to take something that he has given you, everything that we have is a gift from God. If he wants you to do with it as he um, sees fit, then we should be willing to do with it, whatever it is, whether it's our money, whether it's our words, whether it's our time, whether it's our actions. What we do, we should always be looking to God and if we look to God and do as God says, then we've done the right thing and we're right on track, no matter what anybody else says. If we are obeying God and doing what else, people might mock, people might say, oh, you're not hearing from God. If you're not hearing from God and you don't think you're hearing from God, then you got a problem. You are hearing from God. Everybody hears from God, whether they know it or not. So anyways, I hope this is a blessing unto you. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I love you. And uh, I look forward to being with everyone in unity, perfect harmony and joy and peace, sharing everything, co-heirs with Christ. No selfishness at all. Completely united in love. 100% as one body, one mind, one spirit in Christ, in God, in harmony and joy and love. It's going to be so amazing. Perfection, no sin whatsoever. Beauty, endless, unlimited bliss, joy, triumph, victory. It's going to be so awesome. And I hope lots of people are going to be there. And I hope Lots of people repent and come out of death, out of sin and out of darkness and into the light and be with God. Come on, people now. You know, give up the sin, turn away from it. It's terrible. It hurts you and it hurts other people. So um, anyways, praise the Lord. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for this message, God.